Today we want to discuss the procedures for installation of a lip seal and or an O-ring into a Titan vacuum furnace. First, we want to start out with the groove, and the inside of the groove actually has to be free of particulates and dirt. So we need to take denatured alcohol or lacquer thinner, but we don't want to use acetone because acetone actually affects some seal materials. And we want to wipe out the seal area and make sure that it's exactly clean, and we'll give you a little example of that. So what we see here is we're going to take our cleaning fluid and we're going to put it on our clean rag. And what we need to do again is just go through the O-ring groove, the bottom and the sides, and make sure that the grease, the oil, the dust, and the particulates, if any, that are in that groove have to be removed prior to the installation of the new seal. When we take our new seal out of the box, there's going to be dust and shipping materials sitting on it from sitting in storage. And you can see that it's a little off color and dirty right now. So this pertains to lip seals and or O-rings. We need to take these seals and methodically clean them underneath, on the sides and on the top. Again, with denatured alcohol, lacquer thinner, but we don't want to use acetone on the seal materials. So what we need to do next is to clean this material free from particulates prior to the installation process. So normally it's nice to have either the O-ring hanging on a crane hook elevated off the floor for a one-man cleaning operation, or if you have a partner, you each hold an end of the O-ring so we don't let the O-ring seal dragging on the dirt as we're cleaning it. So then we take the O-ring and we wipe it off with our cleaner. And as we're wiping it off with the cleaner, he's feeding the O-ring to me and I'm feeding the outer side back to him. So we're rotating the O-ring while cleaning it and keeping it off of the floor is the paramount issue here, not letting it pick up debris. So we go through this process until the O-ring is free of dirt and particulates and dust. During the installation of a lip seal and or O-ring, it's very important that you don't start at one of the clock positions on the door and think that you're going to essentially run around the door and bring the O-ring back to the other side and it's gonna fit because I can guarantee you it's not going to fit. What you're going to end up with is a loop in your O-ring that's sticking out of the groove and you're immediately thinking that the O-ring is the incorrect size and it's too large. Not necessarily the problem. The problem is with the installation of the seal, not that it's actually too large. When we're about to install the lip seal and or O-ring, it's important, again, that it's clean properly, the groove and the seal, we want to install the seal at the 12 o'clock position on a horizontal furnace. That takes the gravity off of the seal and allows the seal to hang down without touching the dirty floor. So we want to put the seal physically in a short section within the top 12 o'clock position. Now you can see that our technician has pinned the O-ring or lip seal at the 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock positions. What that does is it facilitates an equal amount of seal material between the clock positions. So now when we're going to put the seal in, we're only dealing with one small section at a time rather than going around in a circle 360 degrees and ending up with two feet of O-ring with nowhere to go. So with any lip seal or O-ring, this is the procedure. We pin it at the clock positions, then come back and put the seal into place. Now, once the seal has been put in, you can see that it's been put in, it's been put in easily. It took our technician five minutes to put the seal in. Some people struggle for quite some time trying to put a seal in because they're trying to put it in in a circle and they just end up with the extra real estate at the end where nowhere to go. So once the seal is in, we want to do our last courtesy wiping of the seal to make sure that any particulates that we might have picked up are removed prior to the final lubrication of the seal.
Now that our seal has been properly installed, we have one last step or one last question really to ask ourselves. And that would be, what form of lubrication do I need to utilize now on my lip seal and or O-ring? And that answer really is dependent on the application of the furnace itself. Whereas, if the door physically rotates on the clock position against a static flange on the furnace, if the door is rotating, then we want to use a graphite powder or dust as a lubricant on the seal. Now you can see the technician is applying graphite dust to the lip seal. In the case whereas the actual door itself rotates on the static flange, only thing that we really want to ever use is the graphite dust. And how much graphite dust is needed? Very good question. You can see inherently the lip seal is orange in color. When the graphite dust is applied, you can see the color change because we physically coated the seal. The silicon has been coated with the graphite dust, which impregnates into it slightly and gives it the gray look. That's what we want to see. We want to see the majority of the seal gray and not orange. So then we know we have enough graphite dust on it. What that does is it allows the door to rotate on the back flange, reduces the drag coefficient slightly, and still makes for a good vacuum seal. Now we do fabricate furnaces where the door rotation is fixed, non-rotating door, and actually there's a locking mechanism or ring, a true autoclave, that actually does the sealing and tightening of the door. In this instance, the door rotates and locks into the cams. On other designs, the door closes and the ring locks to make the seal. So in that application, we would only use vacuum grease on the other application. In this application with a rotating door, strictly graphite powder. On the other one, it's most of the time vacuum grease. We'll take you over there and just show you a quick picture of one of those rings. As seen here, we have a bottom loading Titan V6 furnace. This particular furnace still utilizes a lip seal. This furnace can use an O-ring or a lip seal. This particular locking ring mechanism can be on a bottom loader and or a horizontal. It depends on the application. But the point we want to make here in this instant, where now this one, the head comes up and the locking ring physically rotates and the door does not rotate, but the ring around the collar rotates. When we want to seal the seal and finalize lubrication, vacuum grease is preferred, but answering to that, the carbon powder also is an alternative. But if you want the best sealability and lubrication you can get for this specific design, the grease is actually the better way to go. Whereas the one that we showed you a little bit ago, where the actual door rotated, in that instance, you may only use the graphite powder and not the grease.